Hey guys, xin chào các bạn. Hola amigos y amigas. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to build a personal uh, portfolio webpage, which is Free Cool Camp's fifth and last project for a responsive web design. My final version of the project will look like this. This video will have two phases. The first, I will show you the minimal coding to complete the project. And then in the second phase, I will show you uh, the additional touch-ups. To keep the video as concise as possible, I've skipped the parts where I write the code and I will just highlight the sections and briefly explain what it does and what it relates to. So with these projects, I like to do a full read-through of the instructions to give me a high-level uh, outline of what I need to do and what I want it to look like. So my outline looks like this. So let's get started. Under Responsive Web Design Projects, if we click on Build a Personal Portfolio Web Page, it will open up a new tab with the instructions. And then if we scroll to the bottom and then click on the Code Pen Pen link here, uh, we want to do that so that we can copy the, the test script. So Control C, and then on a blank new page, we'll Control V and paste that script here uh, so that we can test all requirements will be met. And then in the drop down list, select personal portfolio, and then we should be ready to start. We can do user story one and user story two together. User story one says my portfolio should have a welcome section with an ID of welcome dash section. And then user story two says the welcome section should have an H1 element that contains text. So all we're going to do is add a section element. And then within that section element, we'll add a H1 element. So here I've satisfied um, story one by having ID equals to quotation welcome dash section quotation. And then for user story two, I satisfied by adding uh, H1 element here within the section element. And then to better organize our code, we can make comments, um, which I did here by starting with arrow exclamation mark and then the comment uh, inside. We can do user story three, four, five, and eight together. In user story three, it wants us to create a section with ID projects. And then for user story four, it wants us within that project section to have elements with the class of project dash tile. For user story five, it wants us within that project section to have uh, the link element. So we can just create uh, links to our work. And then for user story eight, it wants us to have a link with the ID of profile dash link, uh, which opens up to uh, GitHub or FCC. So for this one, I've linked it to my GitHub uh, profile. Going back to our HTML page, we've started a new section here. And then to satisfy user story three, I've added uh, ID equals to quotation projects quotation. And then to satisfy user story, uh, four, I've added within the project section uh, in the A elements, uh, the class equals to quotation project dash tile quotation. And then I've satisfied user story five by having three different links. So three different A elements uh, linking to my YouTube channel, my GitHub profile and my CoPen profile. And then to satisfy user story eight, um, one of the links uh, is uh, a link to GitHub. And then I've added the ID of equals to quotation profile dash link quotation. We can do six and seven together. In user story six, it wants us to have a navigation bar with the ID of a nav bar. And then user story seven wants us to have at least one link within that navigation bar that will navigate to uh, other sections of the page when we click on that link. So if we go to our HTML page, uh, I've started a navigation section here. I used a header element. And then within my header element, I've added uh, an IMG element to add um, a logo at the top corner. And then after my IMG element, I've added uh, the navigation element. And then this satisfies user story six by having 
the ID equals to quotation navbar quotation. And then to satisfy user story seven, uh, within the navigation bar, I've added uh, four different A elements, which will link to four different sections on my page. Um, so to do that, I've had the attribute href here equals to uh, quotation and then hashtag uh, the name of the IDs that will, I will add later uh, on the page. So we did use the story eight earlier. In user story nine, it says my portfolio should have at least one media query. So we can make a media query in CSS. In CSS, I've added at media only screen and uh, max dash width of 800 pixels. So essentially, it, when the viewport is 800 pixels or less, uh, these rules will apply. So uh, some notable um, instructions that I've added is that in position, I've changed uh, from fixed to absolute so that when it's on a smaller screen, rather than having that navigation bar um, blocking the viewport, it will be absolute so that when you um, scroll down, the navigation bar will will move up. Uh, it, won't, it won't always be fixed in that position so that the navigation bar won't block uh, the viewport. It will move, move as you scroll. I've applied a width of 100% so that uh, the navigation bar will cover from left to right. And then uh, for Z index, I've applied five uh, so that the links within my header section will always stay in front so that uh, when you click it, it will navigate to those sections and it won't be blocked by any other elements. So this header um, refers back to our HTML header ID equals to quotation header here. In user story 10, it says the height of the welcome section should be equal to the height of the viewport. We can satisfy that by using our CSS. Um, so in CSS, I've referenced our hashtag welcome dash section, which refers back to our welcome section here, section ID equals to quotation welcome dash, dash section quotation. Uh, so to satisfy that requirement uh, for height, I've applied an attribute of 100 uh, VH, which it, VH is the unit, uh, which is the percentage of the viewport height. So since we applied 100, that means 100% of the viewport height, which uh, satisfies requirement 10. So for our last story, use the story 11, it says the nav bar should always be at the top of the viewport. We can do this in CSS by applying, well, first we'll reference our header section. So header here uh, refers back to our header ID equals to quotation header quotation, which contain our navigation element. So whatever instructions we apply for header, will apply to our header section in, in HTML, which contains our navigation bar. So I've applied here position uh, colon fix semicolon, which means that uh, the navigation bar will always uh, stay in that place no matter how much we scroll up or down. And then our top attribute of zero pixels, so which means uh, there's zero spaces uh, from the top. So therefore the navigation bar will always be at the top and then with 100%, which means it covers from left to right. With that, it should complete the minimal coding for the project. So if we just click on our top uh, left corner and then for our personal portfolio, if we run the test, uh, 12 of the 12 requirements has been met. So I'm gonna move on to the second part of the video where I show you guys, or ex briefly explain the additional touch-ups I've added to, um, to complete my uh, page. The first thing I'm going to do is in HTML, I'm going to add four background images, uh, one background image for each of my sections. So uh, first is the welcome section, and then second is the portfolio section, third is my skill section, and then fourth is my contact section. So I've added the four images here. Uh, you can see that there's four IMG elements. So the first IMG element is here, the second is here, third is here, and the fourth one is here. And in each 
of these IMEG elements, it's wrapped uh, with a division element. Uh, this just provides more versatility and flexibility on how I want to adjust it in CSS. Um, so in each of these, uh, we have an alt attribute. So in case if the image doesn't work, uh, this text will show um, to kind of remind us what image uh, should belong there. Uh, and then uh, in each of these, I also have a class and uh, ID element. So we can use these to uh, format uh, and reference later in CSS. Background image for the welcome section here. And then the second image is the portfolio background image. Third is the my skills uh, background image. And then the fourth is the contact me background image. And when deciding whether to adjust or create things between uh, coding and or like within the visual editor, like Photoshop, Core Draw, or Canva, you have to kind of just balance uh, between efficiency and uh, versatility. So if it's faster and more practical to create in the visual editor, um, that's what I would do versus trying to write a code or trying to um, like write something in CSS or HTML to create a line when you can do it like in five seconds within the visual editor. The last thing I'm going to do in HTML is add an about me or contact section. Uh, in this section, you want to write about uh, what you do, what service you can provide, um, and then a little bit about yourself just to humanize the page. And then some links or methods on how uh, someone who crosses your page can contact you. This could be a potential client or an employer. So for me, I wrote the first few bullet points. Uh, I'm a front-end developer, UI, UX designer. Uh, and then my third point is just something uh, a little bit my, about myself, just humanize the page. So I love to travel. So that's what I conveyed in my third bullet point. Um, you want to keep your about me section concise and straight to the point. And then after the the blurb. Um, I provided links to my other uh, mediums. This includes LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, uh, CodePen, GitHub, and YouTube. So I provided five different links. So it makes it easier for, let's say if one person doesn't have one medium, they can use the other medium to contact me. Each of these mediums, I've added a logo and then I've wrapped the logo with an A element. So when you click on that logo, uh, it will open up to a new page and uh, that is done by having this attribute target uh, equals to quotation underscore blank quotation. So each of these images are wrapped with an A element to give the logo a linking ability. I'm done with HTML so the remaining uh, adjustments I will be doing in CSS. Uh, first, I want to change my background color and the font. So uh, here I've added uh, add import uh, URL query to change my font to Nunito. Uh, I reference to one of the Google fonts. Uh, and then color is the font color, which is white. And then background dash color will be the background color. Line dash height is the, the vertical spacing between our text. And then width means that uh, these instructions cover the entire uh, width from left to right. The next thing I want to do in CSS is format our background images. Uh, so period background underscore grid uh, will reference back to our division element in HTML here where we had class equals to quotation background underscore grid. Uh, so within this division element, we it contained uh, the four background images. Um, so here I've applied a display uh, colon grid, semicolon. So this will just help align everything. Um, so it'll be like uh, essentially a grid template, a, a table, and then it'll be the first background image, second background image, third background image, and then the fourth background image. So everything is just within a grid, it's aligned, and um, it's nicely organized. So 
after I did that, I referenced to each of the, um, the division elements that was within that uh, division grid element. So as you can see in HTML, I had uh, division ID equals to quotation background one quotation. So here I referenced it in CSS, hashtag background um, one, and then so I did that for each of the four background images, and then I used the attribute um, grid dash column colon one uh, for all of them because we just want only one column. And then uh, for background one, I did row one. And then for background two, I did row two. And then for background three, row three. And then background four, row four. So we have a grid and then it's just row one, two, three, and four. In CSS, we're going to apply formatting to our portfolio section, uh, skill section, and then about me section. So starting with our project section, notable things I did is uh, first, I applied formatting to our header three, which is um, the portfolio here. I just made it the font size bigger. For the three A elements down here, uh, I've applied formatting so when it's by itself, the color is silver. However, if you hover over it, uh, the color will change to a, a CN type color. And then also I've applied attribute of font dash weight uh, colon bold so that uh, it kind of pops out when you hover over it. And then moving on to our skill section, I've applied similar formatting uh, to the title here, I just made the font size font dash size um, bigger, and then applied um, a border at the bottom, kind of like an underline, and then uh, yeah, we'll move on to the contact me section. So in contact, um, similar, I applied uh, so that the font for the about me title is bigger, uh, that there's a border at the bottom. And then uh, for each of these uh, contact links at the bottom, um, I made, I've resized them. So uh, starting with LinkedIn, uh, I use the attribute width uh, 5 uh, VW, uh, which is viewport width uh, percentage to just make it smaller compared to its original size. Um, and then I applied a Z index of three so that it will be in front of other elements, assuming they're at a default value of zero. I applied a similar kind of formatting to each of the logo links. And then I've also applied opacity of 0 0.85 just so that it um, kind of dims and blends in uh, with the rest of the page. And then at the very bottom, I applied uh, ING colon hover so that when we hover over these ING uh, logos, I use filter colon brightness at 150%. So like when we hover over it, uh, the logos will look like they, they brighten up. It will just kind of like add a effect to it. So if we save and then change the view to full page view and then run the test again on personal portfolio, uh, everything should check out and that brings us to the end of the video so if we click hello the welcome section portfolio jumps to the portfolio section click on skills jumps to the skills section and then click on contact and jumps to the about me slash contact section so thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed this video uh, please give it a like and if you would like to um, tune in for future videos, uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.